When the M2 MacBook Air first launched, there was a lot of controversy about Apple's first MacBook Air completely redesigned to take advantage of the new Apple Silicon chips. Controversies like the M2 MacBook Air being priced too highly, the slower storage on the base model, and some complaints that it thermal throttled under heavy workloads, and even some controversies about the paint job itself. However, nearly half a year later, are those controversies even still relevant? And more importantly, should you buy an M2 MacBook Air right now? Well, to answer that, we need to go through these controversies and really talk about the truth behind this M2 MacBook Air. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I've bashed Apple at their lack of support for multiple external displays on their M1 and M2 Max, because out of the box, you are only able to connect this MacBook up to one external display at a time. Well, thankfully, that's a problem I can say that is now fixed thanks to Anchor and their Anchor triple display USB-C docking station, which levels up your MacBook by connecting up to three monitors and anything else you need for your workstation. This allows you to upgrade your M2 MacBook Air to a complete multi-monitor workstation experience. For me, that means I can use a multi-monitor setup with programs like Final Cut Pro to increase my productivity, have all of the tools and video scopes on two displays, and still have another monitor to use for research or even entertainment. But the choice is yours. You can put whatever you want on these monitors. And this easily solves one of the biggest issues with the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air or any of those M1 computers, which limited their abilities to connect to multiple monitors. And it is a must have accessory for any user that wants a multi-monitor setup. The dock itself is also super sleek for just how many ports it adds to your MacBook. With a 10-in-1 design with two HDMI ports, a display port, a 100-watt power delivery port, a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, and even an Ethernet port, and also an auxiliary in and out port to easily connect speakers or headphones to your desk setup, and you can have that all connected in that one desk hub. So if you're looking to level up your MacBook with the ultimate hub or docking station, Anchor's triple display USB-C docking station is the right one to get. So make sure you check out the link in the description below to get your own Anchor USB-C docking station. And thank you to Anchor, not only for sponsoring this video, but also for fixing one of the biggest limitations with the M1 and the M2 MacBooks. Okay, so after five months, the initial praise of this device, does it still hold up? Well. I kind of think it does, because I still love the design of this M2 Air. It is still very thin across the entire device. It weighs just 2.7 pounds, so it's super easy to pick up and hold or put in your bag. And this modern design, it's still a delight to use after all this time. I am still impressed by just how thin and lightweight this is and how much I love the new direction that Apple has taken with basically all of the designs in their product with these new flatter designs. Now, speaking of design, there was one area of concern, particularly with this midnight color. Uh, a lot of users kind of looked at this color and they thought, okay, maybe this might get scuffed up easily and maybe you'll see like a lot of scratches on this dark paint. And honestly, um, I haven't seen too much wear and tear on my machine. Like I think if you look really closely around these USB-C ports where you frequently plug things in, I think you can see like on the inner part of this connector, just some minor scuff kind of thing. Like it's very, very slight uh, if you wanted to really, really critique it. But looking at the rest of the body of this MacBook Air, uh, the paint job has held up really well. Uh, but that also means that the fingerprints have held up really well. This thing is a fingerprint magnet in this midnight color. So just be made aware of that if you plan on buying uh, the midnight color. You might want to go with a uh, silver or a lighter color to not show as much fingerprints on it. Now, I still do love that Apple decided to bring back MagSafe to their laptop lineup. This is the primary way I charge my laptops when I'm not using them connected to my desk. And it's a nice thing to have uh, as a peace of mind if anyone trips over this wire. This laptop isn't going to go crashing down to the floor, and it's nice knowing that you still have access to those two USB-C ports to connect with additional peripherals. The design on the inside I'm more used to because it's very similar to the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which I have been using even longer than this M2 MacBook Air. But the point remains, this now has a more modern full screen design with a 13.6 inch display. Over the months that I've been using the Air, it definitely feels weird to go back to the older screen design of the M1 MacBook Air or the designs before it. It's not the screen quality between the older M1 Air and the M2 Air that are different, honestly. Besides the brighter screen on the M2 Air, uh, the screen picture quality is very similar out of what you would expect out of a modern day Apple calibrated LCD display. No, the real difference is just how it looks, like the design, the more modern design of the slimmer bezels around the device, and of course, the notch cut out directly in the center of this MacBook display. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. I really like the look of it. 
And I'm a fan of that notch, which does enable this M2 Air to have a better quality 1080p webcam. However, in all honesty, there's a chance that Apple, if they really wanted to now, could probably get rid of this webcam entirely on their laptops. The 1080p webcam itself is decent. I mean, it's more than suitable enough for a video call. But now with the recent release of macOS Ventura and iOS 16, you can actually now use your iPhone's camera as a webcam for your Mac, complete with effects, center stage, and even a cool desk mode view. And you can prop that right up on top of the M2 MacBook Air's lid uh, with this handy little Belkin MagSafe mount. This is a cool feature that will result in a much better image than you get out of the stock webcam. But what do you think? Do you think that Apple should release a full screen laptop with no webcam and rely entirely on the iPhone's camera with this new continuity feature? Or do you think that most consumers still expect and want a dedicated webcam on their laptops? Like you could kind of make the argument that maybe if Apple included like a mount with every MacBook purchase, Maybe, maybe that would work out, but, but I, I still tend to think that, yeah, you just want a webcam built into there. You don't want to fuss with all that extra stuff. At least most normal users do. I will fuss with it because I will do anything to get the better picture quality, but I think most users are probably like, you know what? I'm just gonna take a video call like this. And honestly, if I'm not doing anything for YouTube, I'm, I'm probably like that. Like if I'm calling my mom, I'm, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the center camera. Sorry, mom, you don't, you don't get the best picture quality. All right, let's focus on the internals of the MacBook Air because Apple got a lot of flack when they first released this laptop for only shipping one single SSD inside of the base model, meaning the storage speeds on that version of the MacBook Air were slower than the higher tiered storage models. However, with this regression over the M1 Air, and obviously you really don't wanna lose any speed if you are coming from an older laptop that had that speed, I still don't think this is an issue that is going to really affect most of the users that would use the base model model. Like even though it's still using one SSD drive, it's not like it's a slow SSD drive. You're still getting read and write speeds that are above a thousand megabits. And the users that would probably even need that faster storage are A, either buying higher storage tiers because they need more storage, and B, they probably aren't even the type of customer that would be buying a MacBook Air. They would more likely be purchasing something higher end if they needed faster storage speeds, like a MacBook Pro. So most normal users aren't even going to notice those speeds. Uh, and I don't think most normal users are even transferring large amounts of data off of their laptops nowadays. Now let's talk about the M2 chip itself. This is, uh, Apple's latest chip, it's actually been added into more products since this M2 MacBook Air has been on the market, uh, namely the new M2 version of the iPad Pro. And that is a product that starts at a very similar price point to the M2 MacBook Air and offers similar performance. However, I think this is actually a really good time to address the value that this M2 MacBook Air provides when you compare it to other offerings like that iPad Pro, because with this MacBook, you are getting a full laptop experience. And I know the iPad Pro is a tablet, it offers touch screen functionality, but when you start to add up the accessories for that iPad Pro to turn it into more of a laptop-like alternative, you kind of see how ridiculous that is from a value standpoint. And even though the iPad Pro does have some hardware advantages, like the 120 hertz per motion display and the mini LED display, when you look at it just from a usability perspective of a laptop, and what I would recommend to most people, for people that want a laptop experience, uh, the M2 MacBook Air is just the better device. Because macOS as an operating system is just so much more mature than iPadOS. It has more professional programs, is better at multitasking, and even though iPadOS has that new stage manager feature, um, just the way that multitasking works on macOS with unlimited windows, uh, the fluidness of arranging those windows, the intuitiveness of using uh, all of the uh, system settings or rearranging windows on macOS is just better than what Apple has uh, come up with, with with Stage Manager. And even if you really like the idea of Stage Manager, that's actually a feature you can access on macOS Ventura. And the Mac version of Stage Manager feels better implemented than the iPadOS version because it doesn't have all those weird um, window management features where it auto moves windows. So the performance of the M2 chip is great and the software on macOS, I still think is better than something uh, like the iPadOS experience. Now, that's just an opinion, right? People might have a different opinion whether they prefer macOS or iPadOS, but I do prefer macOS. And when you look at the performance of the M2 chip in this Air, uh, I still think it's really good. Apps open incredibly quick, the system almost never lags, scrolling, animations, user input, everything is fast and requires very little load times thanks to Apple Silicon. And you can even push the M2 chip 
to the limits on the MacBook Air to use it for more demanding tasks. I think this MacBook Air would be an excellent choice uh, for not only just basic everyday users, but also people who are just starting out with things like video editing, music production, and especially for developers who are just starting out uh, writing code. Like this is an excellent laptop. It's going to age very well. The M2 MacBook Air may not be the fastest choice that Apple offers in terms of raw performance. I think that's pretty obvious, but it's impressive just how versatile and just how good it is at handling the range of every everyday tasks, and more intermediate and professional apps. Will the M2 chip thermal throttle? Yes, of course, it will. It's a fanless laptop, and when the chip gets hot, the only way to cool that down is to throttle the chip's performance. But this throttling of performance is still above the performance of what you would get on the M1 chip, and still better than any of the older Intel MacBook Airs that had literal cooling fans inside of them. And listen, this isn't a pro laptop. Like, look at this thing. Look, look at this thing. This is not a pro laptop, but most users won't even be hitting anywhere near the performance necessary to get that chip to throttle. I think you could argue maybe the most likely area that a normal user would face uh, with these limitations for a MacBook Air would be if they are playing games. Obviously, most Macs aren't good at playing games, but I found that the GPU usage of the MacBook Air uh, for longer sessions, like playing a game, that's where you start to really notice something like the thermal throttling. So much so, in fact, that I really don't recommend the 10-core GPU model to really anyone, and I think most users should probably save money and just go for the base model eight core GPU. Now, more importantly, the M2 chip continues the legacy of the M1 chip, providing real measurable results to power efficiency and performance per watt. This translates to outstanding battery life on the M2 MacBook Air and lives up to the high 18 hour battery life rating. This is the type of laptop that you can pack in your bag and start the day with, and it will last you through the entire day. You might not even need to bring that charging brick in your bag, which is great for space savings and also great for when you're packing last minute and you forget it. So this is a really good laptop for users who want to use their laptop for work or for school and who want a thin and light profile to make it the perfect companion to bring along with you to class, set down on tables, bring it to the coffee shop, or even just lounging around on the couch with a comfortable laptop that literally won't make noise, so it's not a distraction in the classroom. When I went to class, it feels like a while ago, when I went to class, I had a Windows laptop and the fan would spin really loud and I, I would be aware of it and I would go, okay, this is kind of a little loud for a classroom. I hope no one calls me out on it. You don't have to worry with this. It's very iPad-like that it doesn't make a sound, it doesn't make a peep. Uh, it just kind of blends in to the environment that you're using it. And it's not gonna like get hot on your lap like past Intel MacBook Pros that I've also had. So listen, is the M2 MacBook Air still worth it? Yes, this laptop has aged beautifully like most of Apple's Apple Silicon laptops. And it's still the newest MacBook available from Apple to purchase. But because it's newer, it doesn't mean it's a replacement for other higher end pro versions of Apple MacBook Pros. Like if you need more performance, you should get those. But this really is the laptop that most users should buy. And listen, we started off this video talking about the controversies of this M2 MacBook Air and if those controversies were still relevant. Uh, some of them kind of still are, but really when you take a look at it, this is still just a really good laptop and a lot of the issues have turned out to be complete non-issues in real world use. Furthermore, because it's a halfway point in this life cycle of the MacBook Air, you can find some pretty good deals right now, bringing it closer to that $1,000 price point it probably should have launched at, and it makes it a much better value and a much easier recommendation right now. All right, I hope this updater review of the M2 MacBook Air was helpful. If it was, leave me a like, and if you're buying an M2 Air, consider using my affiliate link in the description below. I'll try to link to a MacBook Air that's on sale. Uh, if you want to see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video if you like this one. If, yeah, if you like this video, come back for another video, or hey, find another video here and watch that. All right, take care, everyone. I'll see you.